Being a Jewish king comes with quite a few prohibitions. Our Parsha records that the king is limited in his marriage prospects, how much wealth he can amass, and even the number of horses he can own. But after listing a number of limitations on the king, the Torah tells us that on top of all that, he's required to write a small Sefer Torah, which he must bring with him and read from wherever he goes. Why? The Torah answers, Levilti rum levavo me'echav, so that his heart does not become haughty over his brethren. Meaning, the Torah he keeps with him is meant to keep him humble. The Ramban notes that this pasuk is a biblical allusion to the prohibition of hubris. Even the king of the land, who has compelling reason to feel superior to his brethren, is proscribed from feelings of haughtiness. Certainly, argues the Ramban, are we simple people enjoined against feelings of arrogance. Various ethical works have noted how egotism is a gateway mida to much worse. For example, the Sefer Orchot Tzadikim, whose entire thesis is that every trait has its proper place in time, states that he will begin his work with a discussion of arrogance. Why? Because pride is the doorway to many evils, and we have seen nothing as evil as egotism in all of the qualities. In contrast, humility and the ability to forgive those who treat us improperly is considered the stepping stone to character perfection. With Rosh Chodesh Elul now in our rearview mirror, this is a perspective worth pondering. Often, machloket between individuals spirals out of control because we cannot ignore what feels like a slight to our honor. Maybe a friend forgot to invite you to their celebration, a family member made a mean comment, or a parent forgot your birthday. We feel hurt and unappreciated. How could they have done that to me? One thing leads to the next, and what started as small bickering has escalated into a full-blown fight. All of a sudden, we're no longer on talking terms, we try and get others to take our side, and what used to be a wonderful relationship is now in shambles. If either party were to just swallow their pride and apologize, many such disasters could be averted or repaired. As one of my teachers once told me, even if you feel you haven't done anything wrong, there's still room for an apology. We don't apologize because we necessarily did something wrong. The reason to apologize is because someone feels hurt by something we did. One of the goals of the next month is to mend the wounds between members of Klal Yisrael and attain forgiveness from those who feel we've hurt them. Asking ourselves how well we've inculcated the trait of humility and how much we could still improve upon it may be one of the best ways to achieve that goal. Shabbat Shalom.